are now listening to Vigilantes Radio presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality art, interviews, music and hot topics. Hosted by Dini Mussolini and co-hosted by Banditti. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at least one hour after each show at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. One time, one time for my people that are indigos, star seeds, or crystalline, and two times for my people that are vegans. We are up, folks, to over 17,000 plus listeners. Actually, let me scratch that. We broke the record the other day. We're at 34,000 listeners per episode and over 865,000 downloads worldwide. Just this year alone, if we've been at it for three solid years, I appreciate all you guys who have been rocking with me on this journey, and we are still growing, baby. It is all because of you guys, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music art and research in every aspect and we want to allow you that opportunity to tell your story man i've had celebrities on the show from grammy award-winning artists uh nominees to actors comedians technology geniuses from authors to professors and aliens or people think they're aliens it doesn't matter who you are or what walk of life that you come from Come on the show and talk to us. So check it out. To book an interview or just to share a real cool story, email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. I am passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do. And together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people that should hear it. Let's create something incredible. And with that, hello out there. There are, let's see, 22,000 of you guys online with us tonight. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of our podcast, Vigilantes Radio. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in and being a part of our audience family. If you like information on how to call in, ask questions, or speak to the guests, dial this number, 701-801-9813. And since we are in a day and age of text messaging, you can hop in the mix directly from my website, which is only one mediagroup.com. Scroll over to the Vigilantes Radio tab and slap that go live button. There's a chat room and you can send me messages because I know we are in the age of text messaging. Nobody likes to pick up the phone nowadays, right? All right. So feel free to shoot me questions to ask our guests. Or uh, just to say hi, um, don't expect me to answer right away because I am, you know, live on the radio doing an interview. So be courteous and please wait. Um, so, yeah, that's a real cool thing that we have there. And as always, all episodes are available for free download at least one hour after the show ends. And you can grab that from our server over at Spreaker.com forward slash only one meteor group at iTunes, YouTube are at our website, which again is only one media group.com. And that goes again for every single episode that we've ever aired, right? Yes, that is right. Well, tonight's episode is the Seraphim of Nazareth interview. And I'm your host, Dini Mussolini. Well, not many announcements. Um, no, not many announcements. Uh, I will be in uh, Canyon Country, California, March the 2nd through the 3rd, then in Hollywood, Burbank, Van Nuys, and ending in San Diego. We have a, a little spot date tour that we're doing. My band, No Longer the Hero, 
So that's cool. So if you out that way, I would love to meet ya and greet ya. You can purchase tickets from over at songkick.com forward slash no longer the hero or songkick.com forward slash Houdini Black. And all that cool stuff is listed on the website. Uh, we'll be giving tickets away, of course, because we do want to see you guys as always. And uh, as far as announcements, that is about it. Uh, also, no Coach Dini tip for tonight. Nah. But for you newbies that like to jump on, and I do appreciate you, uh, the new audience who tune in sometimes, um, Coach Dini is me, of course, and uh, I am a music industry insider. So I've been in the music business for at least 12 years now, right? I got signed right out of high school, started, you know, writing some things for some people, for a record label, uh, and then I went on tour and then uh, after that, I started working for Russell Simmons as his junior road manager. And uh, from there, I opened up only one management and started managing artists, local, international, national, and some Grammy Award winning artists, yes. I still work for one to this day. So um, now every now and then, I give tidbits on my Facebook and uh, Snapchat and any other outlet, and especially the podcast because it's my platform. And I give you guys, I answer your emails and give you guys uh, industry tips on how to make the best of it as possible, right? So uh, if you go to the website, uh, onlyonemediagroup.com, you can book me directly from the website. I no longer charge for my time as I did in the past, but this year we're cutting that program out. And believe me, I love the money, but I feel like uh, I have to answer the universe calling and say, hey, this knowledge should, should be free. So... You can book me for free consultation. We'll talk about your dreams, your mindset, and all that good stuff. But to actually do the lead work, to give you the PowerPoint presentations, the uh, what we call the blueprints, the music industry, all the little secrets here and there, that you have to pay for. But, you know, it's very affordable. So, but I will give you guys a word of encouragement, and that is expect even better. So you should let your reality be driven by your expectations, not the other way around. Expect the best, and if you don't get it, expect even better. If people fail to meet your expectations, there is no reason to lower those expectations, right? In fact, it's an opportunity to raise them higher. Don't compromise your expectations based on disappointing results. Instead, use the experience to make your expectations more compelling. Choose your expectations to be more than just an, an uh, extrapolation of what has already happened. Set those es expectations based on where you intend to go next. And truthfully, the purpose of an ambitious uh, expectation is not to eventually prove yourself accurate. It is, and jot this down, it is to compel and encourage you and those around you toward excellent performance. So, Coach Dini will tell you guys, keep your expectations high no matter what. And you'll find and you'll keep your efforts pointed, pointed towards the best that you can imagine. All right, so, yeah, that's my little word of encouragement for you guys. I know you guys email me these type of things, you know, wanting advice for this and that. So if you're on my Snapchat, I do answer questions there, and I do answer questions on the podcast. And with doing things like that, of course, because there's so many of you guys, and I do appreciate you guys. So this is kind of like a universal message for you. So let's, with, uh, without any further ado, let's jump into the real reason why you guys are here. It's not for Dini Mussolini, right? No, it's for Seraphim. Like, gee golly, there's 22,000 of you guys. Man, you're going to break the internet. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive deep into this interview, shall we? Uh, what can I say? <laughs> Besides looking at the amount of blood, the amount of sessiness of these promo pictures. And if you guys didn't know, old Dini is a true vampire. Well, at least I was five years ago. Uh, but more about that on another podcast, right? Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> I just made it funny. Uh, yeah, at least it was funny to me. I need to hire some writers. Sheesh. Anywho, I knew I'd be having a good conversation with Seraphim uh, with plenty of uh, things in common between us to talk about. 
and I'm never ever wrong. <laughs> I've always imagined what it would have been like to have been obviously talented at an early age like Seraphim. Would I have felt now that I missed out on something than being caught up in, in a whirlwind of success or the ambition of a fresh start and journey to success? Hmm. Seems all too familiar. Or, or what Denny would have loved every single moment. And I like to think that I would have, as I am enjoying all of these good times now, I am truly blessed. But I can't tell you her tale or anything from her actual life experience. However, Seraphim can, and that is what she is here to do tonight, right? A little fact, both of, both of us are from Mississippi. Me, being from the slums of the historical Jackson, Mississippi, and Sir Film being from the legendary and mystical town called Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, you've heard of Elvis Presley, right? Yeah, I thought so. Well, we've also spent some time in Hollywood, California. As you guys know, I am a frequent flyer between the two places. I live in both cities, right? Yes. Um, so she strikes me as the traveling type, the consensual rock goddess who roams from city to city, calling her hat her home, wherever that may be. But again, if I had to judge from simply the photos, well, would you look at that? The hair, the stare, the grace. Wow. Wherever she travels to, <laughs> I hope it's close enough for us to check it out. Uh, Seraphim of Nazareth is the real deal, authentic through and through. She has taken some time with us to answer my ramblings, as I am so famous for. And I am but a humble listener and an observer. And artists like Seraphim are so immersed in their craft that they truly know all of the details within it. And it will be an honor again to know Seraphim and learn about the life that she has led. For still being a young woman, she has lived a tremendous amount of life. And she's more than willing to share these experiences and insights with you all through this interview tonight. So I won't keep you guys waiting any longer. Welcome to the show, Seraphim. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great, thank you. All right. Shall we dive deep into this interview? Yes, we shall. <laughs> All right. So you have more of an uh, impressive life. You're an independent film director and the front woman of the band Deliver Me Up. Now, not so long ago from this point in your life, you're going to leave uh, Tupelo and move to Hollywood. I understand why you moved away from your small town scenario and towards the big city. But what I feel like I'm missing from the bio and notes I have here is this. What was the reaction to that first moment in Hollywood? <laughs> My first moment in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, well, that was a runaway. Uh, when I first came to Hollywood, it was two of my girlfriends. So that in itself, you know, I think it was like around a little bit over 16, 15 in that, in that area. And um, so, of course, I get here and the town is bigger than I expected it to be. And uh, I was here for like I was, mm, six months, went back. And then I just left officially like five months after that. I realized why I left and I just remained here. But it was like overwhelming because I was like so little. And um, back home, I just, I just knew I knew everything. I, I had this idea of what I wanted to do with my life, and I didn't realize I was that little. <laughs> mm. You know, like, like, you know, when you're young, you think you're really grown, and I thought I was, like, super grown up, and I really wasn't. But I, I went ahead with my first intention, and I came back, and I haven't gone back since, not to live, but it's, I went back to visit only. Yeah, it, was quite, it was quite intimidating, and compared I looked like I was, like, 12 years old. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I looked really young, extremely young. All right, a runaway at 12 years old. <laughs> no, I, right. I looked 12, but I wasn't 12. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. So how old were you? 16, you said? Yes. 16, a runaway. So did you do like the whole jump on a traveling train and just go to wherever it takes you? No, actually, I, I came with uh, two of my girlfriends. Uh, one was 11. And the other was, uh, I think child was like 13 years old. And the one had her boyfriend that she was coming here with. So I was like, I wouldn't go to Hollywood too. 
and I was thinking like I was in school, you know, it's like, we all go to Hollywood or New York. And so she, I came back, she went to Florida first and she came back and I was like, I want to go. My mom and dad said I couldn't go. And I was all like, why not? And it's like, cause you're too little. And I didn't understand that. So I left. <laughs> so we all three came in together and, um, you know, it's, I, like I said, my first guy here, it was, it was a bit overwhelming because I didn't know anything or anybody except for them. So I did go back and then I came back, you know, like five months later and I've been here ever since. But mm. I wouldn't advise you must do that. And out of that experience, I got my movie on Hollywood. So I wrote a movie called Unholywood, which is the one that um, we're casting for right now. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. at this point in your life, the present day where we all are meeting you now, um, you've taken on a band and you're calling yourself Deliver Me Up. Well, how is being in a full band? Um, well, actually, I like it. I prefer being in a full band because uh, I was a solo artist, obviously, before. And in doing so, my producers and some of my other uh, peers, like they were in major rock bands already. And um, they would help me with my tracks and stuff and in the studio and rehearsal. And so I'm like, I want to start performing out live. So I would borrow their members, their band members. So I always kind of like had a band, but it wasn't like my own personal band. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that, like God had helped me out. Yeah, you know, at the beginning, uh, Carol helped me out. So uh, some of the members like helped me out rehearsal and actual, uh, you know, backing up on stage. Um, Kenny Thieves. Um, just to throw a couple names out there that you know that's kind of like helped me out on the back end of live um, performance and also um, Julian from Nitzer Up. So you know, some of the bigger name bands they pull they pull together and kind of like you know help help me, you know, to where I'm at right now. Okay, so tell us about these creative players you're making music with and how being in a full band has helped expand your own musical horizons. Uh, about some of the creative players that, that I'm in music with, that like my producers and all. Um, yeah. But right now, right now, my producer is Jason Charles Miller. from He, he is Godhead, the band Godhead. Uh, they're an industrial band. Uh, now he's his, his own side project now. He has like a couple bands that he's doing. And uh, he's also, uh, you know, a a Graham uh, winning um, songwriter as well and producer for other artists. And um, like I said, like Bruce Summers from Kitney Seas. Uh, I mean, like their, their name speaks for herself. They're more of like industrial and rock in, like or like Nine Inch Nails, like era, Chet Reznor. Um, so, yeah, it's like I just come from like a really cool small family, you know, that kind of like believed in me and, and gave me pointers here and there on, on – um, what not to do and what to do in the industry. Kind of like Gene Simmons. I also met with Gene Simmons uh, for management uh, before. And um, he sat down for an hour and a half and gave me the in and outs on, on what I should do, what I should not do, what I should own, what I should not own. And, you know, basically like how to, you know, how to keep me, you know, in the right eyes and the right people, you know, and not getting ripped off. Like own your publishing and, um, Trade, your trademark is important and visuals are very important and, you know, always, you know, make it personal. And it's like just the little things matter to, to Eugene. So, you know, I think everything I've learned from each and every one, you know, that who's invested in my career, like as in a conversation or meetings or whatever, and I just apply it to my life now. So, you know, now I have, like I said, like Deliver Me Up, and that's my own personal uh, band. And, I, of course, I'm a front woman, woman of Deliver Me Up, which means if I change the change band members, then I'm still del delivering me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So are, are, do you think there are more opportunities for a full band than a solo act? Um, you know what? I, I think so because you get to tour, you get to do festivals. Uh, I'm not saying that solo acts can't do festivals, but however, it's better to have a full band um, when you're touring because the stage is already set up for a band already. So it's kind of like weird if you go up there as a solo artist with a full band behind you, but nobody's really, nobody's at the at the drum set, <laughs> you know, or at the keyboards. You, you like you're doing it to like a uh, what do you call those, those those stat tracks in the back. So I find that it's better to travel, you know, with a full band. Plus, there's nothing better than life music. You can't get better than life music. You know, I prefer life, you know, than over tracks any day. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big fan of diversity in songs, and it's even better listen when there's a cohesion in the music that ties them together and can still be identified as your sound. I hope this new album will be 
just that, though I could imagine your songs themselves are quite different from one another. And uh, so could you tell us a little bit about your uh, debut album, Chaos and Innocence? Yeah, sure I can. That's really, it's an interesting album, actually, Chaos and Innocence. It's, uh, well, it's come from a dark light place, like, really. <laughs> um, and um, it sort of colors the time that, that I was in, like, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, especially spiritually. You know, like the conflict of, of wrong and right, good and bad, dark and light, mm-hmm. uh, demonic and God, uh, because I'm extremely spiritual. And I just ran through a couple of spiritual conflicts along the way of obstacles. I had to make a choice, and I think I made the right choice. Hence, deliver me up, uh, instead of him of Nazareth. Um, but yeah, I just, Kevin, yes, it's basically like, you never love me, you know, like I said, subtract about Yeshua. You can never tell it, but it really is, um, which is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, yeah, like I said, I'm not religious at all. I'm very spiritual, but not religious. And just, you question, like, you never loved me, like, certain things in your life happens, and then he's there, and then he leaves. Like, when I say that, I mean, like, literally. And then he returns, and then you wonder, why did you ever return at all if you're not going to do what you said you was going to do at the beginning? Or if you're going to just, like, um, this is extremely personal. Because <laughs> if, you, if, you if you listen to you never loved me, I mean, and consider I'm talking about Yeshua, it's, it's, it's really deep. You know, and um, I was just like just questioning, you know, God himself, I guess. And why did you really go to the cross? Are you really our redeemer? And was that just a sham? Or are you really going to do what you said you was going to do, basically? Because I thought like he, he was a man as well. So I, I, at no fault, you know, I can't speak against it. He is, he was a man as well. So, but yeah, this kind of like where chaos, innocence is between like that and anything. Of course, you got Lucifer that always tries to... um intertwined in my life all the time and just the conflict of just staying in the right spirits and just kind of like no um because my ex-boyfriend with Diamond Gacy he was an ex-Satanist mm-hmm. and um he was he was the head of one of the head of Church of Satan and um we dated and we, we lived together in Hollywood Hills and I actually dumped him four times <laughs> the last time I did not take him back and so I'm a very strong spirit and I realized that when you mix souls like that or you mix spirits that you get a little bit of him with you. Like, I got a little bit of his demons, and I do not like his demons. <laughs> mm. So it's like, yeah, so it's kind of like me shaking off that part of my life that everybody's like, oh, well, she did him down in DC. And he was a Satanist. And then I, I have a remnant of his demons with me, and I don't like it. And so it's just a conflict of just chaos and innocence of, of keeping myself who I am, keeping myself a good soul, a good spirit. Um, doing good to mankind, like I want to have organizations that help runaways, of course, and the homeless and help battered women and help rape victims and things like that. And that could never happen if I had not experienced the darker side of things, and which is the rape, the murder, what well, they call the sacrifice, uh, just all things like that that people don't know actually exist that do. Hence, in Hollywood, you see like a lot of that in my movie, in Hollywood. But chaos and innocence is that. It's like I wear the blood of Christ on me for a reason. Because I'm redeemed. Like I said, re- redemption can, is, is very appealing. It's very alluring, you know. Because see me, it is. You know, everybody likes the light. Even the dark likes the light. So I would rather be sanctified than unsanctified. But, yeah, I mean, my album is it's, <laughs> it's a piece of work. And it wasn't easy to write. Yeah, I could imagine. Um, so how do you keep it interesting for yourself, this whole songwriting thing? Um, I wouldn't say about interesting, like usually my writing sessions, what I do is I'll just usually have candles lit um, in my place and I have all the lights out and candle lit up to like a little area to where I can only see. And I just like, just really relax and just like think about where I'm at in my life and what does I want to say, you know, or, or sometimes I may get upset or angry in a situation and I just like grab my pen and I just start writing and it just all comes out. Like, you never loved me, that, ha- that happened like that. Uh, you're my biggest mistake happened almost like that because I kept hearing the word all the time like you're my biggest mistake big mistake big mistake like all the time big mistake and I, and I went to see I said Jason so my producer I said I keep hearing this word big mistake all the time like all the time and we was about to write a song he goes hey that'd be a great time for a new song and so basically he said well well 
well, why are you here in the big mistake all the time? And who are you, who are you talking to when you're, when you're saying that? And I was like, oh, okay. So I wrote, you know, my biggest mistake, of course, it was, it was, <laughs> it was about yours truly. And uh, <laughs> it's a piece of work. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm really spiritual. And it's, um, but yeah, it's just, just, just keep, keep myself like uh, intact, I guess, um, when I'm writing and not, and not overwrite, which I actually do overwrite. And in the studio, Jason, in a, he has to do an editing session because I overwrite my song. So then he has to rewrite into song format, you know, in order for us to like start recording it. Definitely. Uh, in, in your opinion, are there still new and innovative ways to approach alternative music? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I, the thing is like, I'm an individual and so is everybody else. And like my idea may be different from your idea. Say if you have a vision, you're like, oh, this has this cool idea for this drum or, or um, for this track. Like me, like every day I think of new songs. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and I, 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 I laugh a lot because I'm like, that would be a dope song. And so I grab my, um, my recorder and I'll say the lines inside my recorder so I don't forget it. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to write that song down. And, and then sooner next time I'm going to, you know, lay a skeleton track of that down so I can kind of like, you know, see what I can go with, go to with it. But I just think that alternative music is a, is a broad um, genre that you can do anything really. Like you can do like alternative gospel. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. I haven't heard it yet. See, I just been to something new. Alternative gospel. That would be really dope, you know, um, where you can just like take your imagination and just, just really – like like create a baseline to it, like a vibe, a, a heartbeat, you know, a pulse to it. That's what I think alternative music does to lyrics. It creates a pulse that um, everybody can uh, relate to and communicate with. Definitely. And and chances are, Seraphim, you're new to our world. I am by no means any kind of expert, just a guy with insatiable need for more music and curious as hell about all the personalities that make it. There is one question that I just can't avoid when I see a band titled something like Seraphim of Nazareth and Deliver Me Up. I find that it automatically comes to mind that I should ask about the control dynamic that exists in your band and uh, uh, specifically your name. So your name is at the hymn. Is, is this you and your band or is the band as one solid entity? No, I am Deliver Me Up. Seraphim of Nazareth is Deliver Me Up. Um, like I said, you know, I could I could hire or audition 10 million keyboardists mm -hmm. and change them at the same time, and, but it would still be my band. In other words, only it would be over as if I were to die. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's kind of like Seraphim of Nazareth is Deliver Me Up. Okay, um, you know what I mean? And so... I mean, to say if I don't like the keywords, won't get along, then the band still remains to deliver me up, and I just change the keyboard. Is. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice concept. Um, is it important to you to break through to uh, new music styles? Is it important to me? You know, I, I'm a free spirit, so it is important to me to be free and allow my imagination to run wild. Say if I wanted to collaborate with, say, I don't know, Kanye West and do a new version of Jesus Walks, which I would very much like to do, um, do the clubbers with Kanye West and, you know, say from Natural with Kanye West, the remake of Jesus Walks. You know, I think that would be awesome, you know, because he's in a different genre. Um, do something with Creed, you know, Scott Stapp, you know, he's a Christian artist. That would be something awesome. You know, do something with, you know, you just name it, you know, um, something with maybe a tool, <laughs> Perfect Circle, you know, because they also have that Christ element. That would be really awesome. So just like crossing the barriers of like the unexpected and the unknown to see what, we, what I can come up with. Even a gospel singer, you know, I mean, like I, I'm alternative, you know, rock industrial and to do something with a gospel singer um, in my genre, to make a little twist on it, that'd be amazing, you know, because they would never see it coming. You know, so, right. yeah. Um, so... By the, by the looks of, you know, your image and, and having you here talk now, it seems like, you know, you do um, gravitate towards, like, alternative Christian music. 
but maybe in a uh, secular approach. Is that correct? Uh, no. Well, you know, no. I, I, well, like I said, you could you can view it as many different ways because since I am a Christed one, I, I come from a Christed one because it's different because my belief is that Christianity came after Christ, after he um, ascended. And there's people that said, we we follow his teaching, so we're called of Christians. And to me, Christ was a, he was a Christed one, like uh, part of the Christhood. So which means that um, before him stood Elijah, you know, stood Moses, they also were Christed ones. So they weren't Christians, they came after. If anything, I would be a pagan Jew. <laughs> so it was like, a, I kind of like, I kind of like dissected it, and I'm like, if anything, I'll be called a pagan Jew. And, uh, and my music as such, because I'm Creole, it kind of like all just fits in because I don't agree with all the teachings of Christianity. Christianity. However, I don't deny it, and I do receive most of their teachings. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, you could call it alternative God rock, alternative Christ rock. I would say I'm, I'm more alternative Christ rock, if anything. Definitely. Okay. I like that. I like that. And um, at the point that we're meeting you at now, how much experience have uh, Deliver Me Up had playing live? Um, well, since I am Deliver Me Up, uh, I've had I've had experience playing live. Um, right now I'm preparing to, I'm rehearsing to uh, do festivals. I want to do like the Beauty Fest in, in New Orleans, uh, um, Coachella, um, Lollapalooza, Lilith Fair, you know, like I'm, I'm really um, preparing to, you know, go out and start just touring basically with other bands, and then, you know, I'm done. Open up for another, like a major, and then start my own um, headline tour uh, called um, Soul Intact because I still have my soul, and a lot of artists do not have their soul intact. Mm. So my first, yeah, so my first tour is called Soul Intact. So that's what I'm preparing for. Okay. <clears throat> So, give us an idea of what kind of show we would see if we ever came over there to see you play a show. What happens on stage? Well, what happens on stage? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there'd be a whole lot of blood. Ooh. <laughs> Seriously. You probably see a coffin. Um, you're coming out in a coffin. You see a whole lot of blood. Uh, you see there's a bathtub full of blood. And plus, I mean, because like the whole ancient, um, ancient of days um, is very much, you know, a part of who I am. And of course, you know, back in the day, you know, they required sacrifice. And uh, so that's what it kind of represents, like the sacrifice of atonement of your sins, basically. And that's where the blood comes in up for redemption. It's like the atonement of your sins. And um, sometimes, you know, a hefty sacrifice was, was required. Uh, what was a lamb, uh, a bull, you know, and Christ, he was the, the last human sacrifice that was acquired, you know, by God, Elohim. So basically, you know, that's what the blood represents. It's like redemption of, of who we are, you know. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty insane and it's pretty cool at the same time. Very theatrical. You would see a uh, silhouette, um, what we call dark forces, but they're not really. They, this is what they represent, though, and they're, like, intertwining in and out while I'm on stage. It's very theatrical, and it's, it is very um, original. Mm, okay. We definitely have to get some footage of uh, this show of yours. All right, so let's go and ask some things about your opinion. Um, if you could hand out some kind of awards to some of the great... Um, right here and now, but in terms of, of people that who, who influence you, um, like what you like to listen to, like give us a winning alternative band artist uh, an award for most authentic. An award for most authentic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, most authentic. I have to say just from my intuition of like um, of knowing and also the artist and the person, I would have to say you have to check rather than nine inch now. Um, that's on the male side. Um, I like Missy Elliott a lot. Like I think she's the most authentic as well and she's like very original in her work and she's outside the box. 
and she can take anyone and produce them. You know, it's like magic with both of these, um, you know, artists. But yeah, you know, Missy Elliott, Trent Reznor, um, Rob Zombie, of course. You know, um, Maynard, so you know, and Tool, Maynard Keenan. Um, yeah, you know, it's just like those are like influences of mine, and like. You know, Alanis Morris that, you know, in her day, she, you know, some of her songs held up, but not all of them. So the ones I mentioned are the ones that, like, through and through, it's like you can just dissect it, and it's like they're consistent, consistent, consistent. Like, you can't separate who they are, even in the real life from, like, you know, from their being an artist. So I would say them. Okay. Um, and I love Misty. Um I mean, Missy, not Misty. Uh, what about the oh, an award for most unique? Most unique. Me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. What about one for best overall? Best overall artists. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Um. Best overall artist. I want to say Michael Jackson. He's not alive yet. Well, not anymore. But we have to be Michael Jackson. Hands down. He did his thing in his day. And it's so sad that, you know, he passed away, you know, at yeah. 50. That's yes. really young. Yeah, but 50. Michael Jackson, he, he holds it. Like, there hasn't, hasn't been anybody like him since him or before him. So I would say Michael Jackson. Okay, now let's turn the tables a bit and uh, play the game versus being yourself. The music industry, as you know, it can be a very, very nasty place for both professionally signed and independent artists alike. And some might argue that you have to change or compromise your dreams somewhat to attain the overall goal. What about you, Seraphim? I don't get the sense that you're the kind of woman to uh, step on a stranger just to get ahead. But is it ever really okay to compromise the vision of your art? No, it's never okay to compromise um, because they won't be happy anyway. <laughs> I have found it out the hard way. It's like go with your vision, go with your gut instinct, and stay mm -hmm. true to yourself because if you try to be somebody else, try to be different, it's going to show, and then they're not going to want you anyway. And then they'll get the person that just kind of like, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want to do, just me, the rebel of the team. And then if you're like, oh, my God, you know, the number one hit, you know, they're like, like you know, up in lights. And it's because they did what they want to do, and they rejected someone that gave them, you know, bad information. And, uh, and like I said, in Hollywood, there's a lot of snakes, you know. There's a lot of sharks in Hollywood. You don't know why they, they, they tell you what to do, what not to do. And sometimes it's to... Um, to purpose them and not you. Mm -hmm. You know, per se, if they have an artist that they want to get ahead for you, so they'll tell you, oh, well, you can't do this, and they take your idea and give it to another artist. And you're like, oh, my God, it was so my idea. Exactly. Because you didn't go ahead and do your idea. Somebody else seen it, and they did it. So always be true to yourself, and um, if they don't like it, so what? You know what I mean? Just keep it moving. Um, I would say just, just, just – Stay true to who you are. I've never compromised anything, even including my God. You know, um, some say it's not cool to worship um, or to represent the Holy Trinity. Are you kidding me? I have a tattoo on my right shoulder, uh, but it's so cool. It says "Property of the Holy Trinity." Mm. And wait until you see this tattoo. Yeah, it's like so cool. And then um, the back of my back, it says "Yeshua Generation," and it's like it's so freaking cool. And now I'm going to have it done like the 3D. I don't know if you've ever seen mm -hmm. like 3D tattooing, but it looks like it's coming out of your skin. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm really excited about, you know, this whole movement and everything. But, yeah, I never compromise. Like, I, I won't compromise my career, my God, my soul, myself. I can't soul intact. Um, and, and I've been in the dark for a while, obviously. You know, my ex-boyfriend's, you know. <laughs> um, but I just choose to stay in the light. It's more attractive and it's more... And you stay alive for like that. You stay alive. Yeah. I can agree with that. So tell all of the listeners what is next for you now that the uh, debut album is on its way, singles are about to be released. What does the future hold for you and the band? 
Uh, the future holds. Um, I just want to do a lot, a lot of touring. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, of course, campaigns. You know, and, and out from that, you know, I'll give like I said, my makeup line. Uh, so you know, unisex makeup line. Um, his and hers makeup. Um, you know, from then my clothing line. You know, uh, Yeshua Generation is something that um, I'm a part of as well. You know, it's like the, your, the generation of those that um, made it through the darkness out and came on the, the other side. And when I say that, I, it's not in a in a um, it's not in a light way. Like I've seen a lot of stuff in my day, and a lot of people who, who has not made it that were good people. And just because they got in the wrong in the wrong eyes of uh, the wrong circle and the wrong influence, and they're not here anymore. Mm. So basically, it's those of us that that went through hell and back, literally, and came out on the other side, or went through something and we're in the dark and realized this is not where it's at, and we kind of like to step back out and be like, Shh, we made it out, and you can help somebody else, you know. Um, it's kind of like the ones that you wouldn't expect it, you know. That would be with Yeshua, which is Jesus Christ, uh, and Elohim, but that really are. I mean, they're actually super cool. That's what I'm coming to show. Like, they're actually super cool. Like. Christianity has, uh, my, in my in my opinion, um, sometimes hasn't let the younger generation appreciate God and Jesus Christ the way that they really are. You know, we have to look at them more of a as a symbol of of uh, of I want to say weakness, but redemption. He was weak. He was on a cross, and you can see him. He's like he's wounded. But what about the man that walked? That you know, that did all these great these great miracles and stuff and and he spoke boldly and he had like the whole town following him to the point that they crucified him you know so it's like that you know that god is he's cool you know i mean anybody that says if you worship this god i'm gonna kill you i'm like well where's this guy at i want to meet him Mm -hmm. that's freaking cool you know what i mean um so that that's what the generation is about it's like you know live life in a fast lane live dangerously you know what because we're martyrs. They call us martyrs. We die for believing in this God, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think he's cool. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's kind of like the, the way we look at him is different from the way, I guess, the church looks at him. Mm-hmm. Because we see him like, as a redeemer, but he's also more than just that. I can totally agree with you on that one. So, spread some love, Seraphim. Um, we always like knowing about who has been there for you. And uh, supported you all along. Who encourage you encourages you to continue making music, and what makes it so awesome for you to have them with you on this journey? Who oh, encourages me to for my music? Actually, I am my biggest encouragement. Because um, awesome. I find, yeah, because I find that um, in this town, everybody's out for themselves, and there's a lot of naysayers. There's a lot of people that. Um, it's been here for a while, you know, and there's some people that, that, that reached a plateau and then they fell and they're trying to get back up and they haven't. So, you know, their they, their positivity is, 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 is not as good as a, a newcomer who's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to have number one hit and I'm going to be, you know, known for my work. And you're like, oh, kid, you know, not, not, not to me, but just like uh, an example. Oh, kid, you know, give it up. You know, everybody wants to be famous in Hollywood. But there's only one you. So either you can take the naysayer talking against you or you can take the person that's, that's elevating you up. With me, it's only me. You know, I am, that's why I, my, I am just such like a loner look, like a vamp, because I only have me, you know. Mm-hmm. So if I don't encourage myself, then I'm not writing that song, you know, or, or I'm not, I'm not um, working with that producer or I'm not, you know, collaborating with that artist if I don't initially make the, make the move myself. Now, after it's made, then they're like, oh, okay, we see what she's about, and they want to work with me more. Right. But the initial is you have to believe in yourself before you know, anybody else believes in you. Okay. So websites, I want you to shout them out. Where do you want all of these new listeners, and they're brutally curious to come and find you online? <laughs> okay. Uh, SirFromNazareth.com. Um, also, SirFromNazareth on Twitter. And uh, I guess a new account, as you can see, we just now, you know, we just now hooked all that up. Um, so they can add their stuff on there tonight as well. Um, Facebook, um, I'm going to start from Nazareth. Um, and also, we've got our Instagram, start from Nazareth, you know. 
and like we're still um, getting like all the social network um, sites together right now. And so yeah, so from Nazareth, like anything you do, is so from Nazareth, you can get hold of me there. Okay. So what kind of stuff will we find on your social media? All right. What kind of stuff? Will um. You post? Uh, will I be posting? Because I, I haven't had much time to post lately, except for just, you know, I don't know. Um, like I said, like I'm rehearsing um, this whole week, so you're going to see my rehearsals on, on, on my Twitter and on my Instagram. Um, so you're going to see a lot of that. Um, I'm casting for my movie. Of course, like I said, we, we will start shooting that. We have to start shooting that um, this coming month. So you'll see dailies on there. You'll see behind the scenes on there. Um, so yeah, just things that, that I incorporated in my career, my life, and um, yeah, I'm trying to get better in, in, in exposing how I am daily. But since, since I'm like really private, it's, that part is kind of like, uh, but um, I'm gonna start doing more selfies and you know posting more selfies up and being more um, in, like open in, in, in my daily life rather than just just my career life. But yeah, and also they can check me out on Sin Icon Motion Pictures and keep it with um my movie Sin Icon, um I mean my movie Unholywood. Okay, cool. I'll definitely be um migrating over to all your pages and uh, linking up with you. And all twenty two thousand of you guys do the same because Denny said so. Okay. All right, after the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the Hot Seat, and our fans love this part of the segment. And, of course, along with the actual interview, but the audience gets to hear either some vocals, poems, uh, inspirational speech, written work, spoken word, maybe a freestyle rap, recite lyrics, musical tributes, jokes, stories, or live instruments from our special guests. Well, you never know what these creative minds and vessels will produce in the spotlight. And tonight, yes, tonight, you're in a treat. We'll find out if Seraphim of Nazareth have what it takes to be put on the spot, a test of her true artistry, and maybe hidden talents. So for now, here it is, uh, Seraphim of Nazareth, you never loved me.
so that was my first time listening to that, and I absolutely love it. Wow, I did not know what to expect, but I, I'm really blown away. It reminds me of one of my uh, favorite soundtracks, uh, Queen of the Dam. Uh, I can't remember the song. Maybe in uh, Jay Gordon, Slept So Long, or Marilyn Manson, Redeemer. But man, I love your song, Seraphim. And with that, we are back. Cool, cool song. Cool, cool song. Thank you. Yes, I did. I really didn't know what to expect. That was my first time listening to the record with everybody else. Oh yeah, I, I think I have. Glad a, you like that. Yeah, I think I have a new favorite song now. I think I want to wake up to that. <laughs> no, I am serious. I think I want to wake up to that. Thank that would you. definitely Please. set my day. All right, so the hot seat. What do you have for us? Oh my goodness! You know that <laughs> one. You. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm not going to put on the spot, but uh, <laughs> I have. I don't know. I have some lyrics that I wrote. For Fit Omit Yashua, it's, uh, it's one of the songs that I have. Okay. Um, so it's an industrial rock mix song. So you have to you have to imagine that. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. It was a pleasant surprise when I saw your eyes. Your deposition was clear when you came near. Where did you come from, from distant so far away? Your fiery eyes, you count the smell, you both feng shui. I became speechless in your eyes, took my breath away, and didn't know what to do or to say. Coming face to face with the spirit of truth, how can I tell you about our condemned dying youth? Good Omen Yeshua, you came and took my pain away. You ignite my fire inside my heart. You, you and my fame, through your glorious light, I found my way. All right, all right, awesome. And, and that was a new verse or uh, from the, what, which yes. song? Yes, cool. it is for Fifth Omen Yeshua, yes. All right, guys, you got an exclusive tonight. Yay, yay, you guys, okay? All right, <laughs> we've had a fabulous time here learning about Seraphim. Um, a lot of personal things came out, which is always cool in these type of interviews. As we dive deep, this is what we are known for, right? Yes. So thank you guys, as always, for checking out the podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free down at least an hour after the show ends, and you can grab that from Spricker.com forward slash only one media group or iTunes or YouTube or the website which is only one media group.com. And that goes for every single episode that we ever aired. If you'd like to request music or send something for us to play, or even have a, a suggestion of a guest for our show, feel free to email me at V radio at only one media group.com. And if you called in uh, to the show before 10 o'clock, you heard our infamous elevator music. And what that is, that is artists, sending me their music to play on a continuous loop that plays 24-7. And I could tell you about the reports that I get back. Even at 3 o'clock in the morning, there are people calling our number just to listen to the music. So that is really cool. It's a lot of exposure for you guys. And uh, a lot of our, artists, our audience are artists themselves, newbies, oldies, and we have even some celebs some that tune in. Some real good friends of mine. So... If you want that, email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre-free, we do not judge, and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts. And actually, you could scratch that disclaimer because all of my opinions are always right. That's just the bottom line. This is my show, so that's something you got to deal with. No, nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Dini Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in, either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word. Also, another special thanks to our guest tonight, Sarah Femme of Nazareth, for joining us. We stepped our game up just for you guys and to make sure you are, make sure our guests have the best experience here on our show. You know, Dini just may end up on one of our guest songs. Who knows? I do it all, my friends. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself 
and be absolutely freaking great at it. Our creator loves you, and I do too. Peace, and have a wonderful night. You are now listening to Vigilancy's Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Of the duo no longer the hero. Co-hosted by the Vigilantes Banditti. Call in to join the mix. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com.